let us come to a very important topic that is stress strain diagram of engineering materials engineering materials can be broadly divided into two groups one is ductile material and two is brittle material when we will call it a ductile material when the fracture strain that is when the material uh, fracture takes place the corresponding strain is called fracture strain which is greater than or equal to 0 0.05 that is called ductile material if it is less than 0 0.05 fracture strain we will call it brittle material that is ductile material will elongate more before fracture and brittle material elongate less compared to ductile material and this is the limit if fracture strain is more than equal to this 0 0.05 we will call it ductile material if it is less than 0 0.05 we will call it brittle material now first of all we will draw stress strain diagram of ductile material and we will show these for two types of ductile material number one there are we have chosen two ductile materials that is low carbon steel low carbon steel and number two aluminium alloys So this is stress strain diagram for low carbon steel. Low carbon steel. So here this diagram has been shown. This is the diagram. So first of all this is the straight line initial straight line up to P. What is point P? P is proportional limit proportional limit what is the significance of proportional limit up to proportional limit stress is directly proportional to the strain this abscissa is strain axis this is epsilon and ordinate is stress axis that is sigma so we can write sigma equal to e into epsilon e is one constant and e becomes where e is young's modulus or modulus of elasticity So if this is origin O, so O to P is a straight line and P point P is the proportional limit where stress is directly proportional to strain and there we have introduced one constant which is E, E is stress by strain which is called Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity. Next point is E, here you can see this is E. What is E? E is elastic limit. Elastic limit. What is the significance of E? That is, if we load the material up to E and if the load is released, there will be no permanent deformation. So, up to E, there will be no permanent deformation there will be no permanent deformation next y1 this is the point y1 y1 is upper yield point y1 is upper yield point Yield means plasticity starts 
from here plasticity starts and y2 is lower yield point so you can see here upper yield point is transient upper yield point is transient whereas this lower yield point y2 is steady because there is a flat portion it is steady so this is a transient point upper yield point and lower yield point is steady so lower yield point is considered as yield point of the material so lower yield point is considered as yield point of the material and corresponding stress on the stress strain diagram SYT is called yield strength of the material SYT is the yield strength yield strength of the material please correct this yield strength of the material next the stress strain diagram goes off and at u the stress becomes maximum in the stress strain diagram so why u at u stress is maximum in the stress strain diagram so u is called ultimate point u is called ultimate point which is corresponds to maximum value of stress maximum stress in the stress strain diagram so at u the value of stress is maximum in the stress strain diagram which is called ultimate point u is called ultimate point and the corresponding stress is yt is ultimate strength of the material so s u t sorry s u t here s u t is the ultimate strength of the material ultimate strength of the material now after that after that the stress value falls in the stress strain diagram why this why this value falls in stress strain diagram because of because of sudden reduction in localized cross sectional area let me write down it so why this stress value reduces because of let me write down it here or better let me erase these things you have already noted so value of stress suddenly reduces after u why because of sudden reduction sudden reduction in localized cross section area after that sudden reduction in localized cross sectional area this phenomenon is called necking this phenomenon is called necking necking so here necking is shown that area here this localized area suddenly reduces due to that strength of the material reduces and that's why the value of stress suddenly fall after u in the stress strain diagram so this phenomenon is called necking and after that at point b the material fails due to shear because the 
ductile materials are weaker in shear ductile materials are weaker weaker in shear that's why the criteria of failure of ductile material is shearing so at point b the failure takes place which is the mode of failure is shear failure if we see the failure modes that is the failure takes place along a plane which is 45 degree to the applied load if this is the load direction then failure takes place along 45 degree and later i shall show you along 45 degree plane shear stress is maximum so material fails where shear stress is maximum and the ductile materials are weaker in shear so mode of failure is the shear here so here necking takes place stress value falls and at b failure takes place and this corresponding strain the corresponding strain is nothing but fracture strain or failure strain so this is epsilon a for ductile material this is greater than 0 0.05 so ductile material elongates compared to brittle material elongates more before failure so this is about stress strain diagram of cast uh, sorry i'm very sorry low carbon steel low carbon steel here it is given fracture strain is greater than equal to 0 0.05 so this is for low carbon steel now let us see what is the stress strain diagram for aluminium alloy that is the second category of ductile material this is the stress strain diagram of aluminium alloys this is for aluminium alloy here you can see that there is no flat space flat flat zone like low carbon steel so what is the yield limit of such type of ductile material so there is no evidence of yielding we have to determine it by we can determine it by 0 0.2 percent offset method that is we shall consider that strain is 0 0.02 percent that is equal to 0 0.002 strain is 0 0.002 or 2 percent strain is 0.2 percent so here let us consider that is the corresponding value of the strain and we shall draw a parallel line to the proportional up to proportional say this is the proportional limit where stress strain diagram is the straight line with this straight line with this initial straight line we shall draw a parallel line from this corresponding point and that will intersect with the stress strain diagram at point y and y is the corresponding yield point so y is yield point yield point so here y is the yield point and corresponding stress value of the y that is s y t is called the yield strength of the material t is the yield strength yield strength of the material and after that at b rupture or failure takes place so this is about stress strain diagram of aluminium alloy now let us come to the stress strain diagram of brittle material let us come to the so this is this is for low carbon steel and this is for aluminium alloy this is the comparison now let us come to the brittle material this is the stress strain diagram for a brittle material for brittle materials there is no existence of yield point no yielding is seen in the brittle material fracture occurs suddenly at point b here fractures occur suddenly with very small plastic deformation and without necking there is no necking no sudden reduction in stress value and fracture occurs suddenly at very small plastic deformation that is deformation before failure or before rupture is very small 
that is if this is the value of fracture strain which is less than 0 0.05. So brittle materials have less strain before fracture compared to ductile material. It suddenly uh, fracture occurs suddenly at point. So this is the difference between ductile material and brittle material. 